Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I am going to do something a little different to what I normally do. I am going to walk you through an exhibition celebrating 70 years of Ferrari design. As you enter the exhibition, you come to this, the genesis or the birth of the Ferrari legend, the 125S. Enzo Ferrari loved racing and he produced road cars in order to finance this, which is different to other manufacturers who went racing in order to sell cars. As the old saying goes, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And you can see the race orientation of the 125's design by comparing the doors on the driver's side and the passenger side. The driver's side door is lower than the passenger one, allowing the driver to jump in and out of the car during the race rather than wasting time opening and closing the door. Ferrari built only three of these cars in 1947. They were later converted to 166mm and 159S models. None of the original 125s exist today. The car we're looking at is a reproduction. Ferrari started work on it in 1987 and presented it to the world in 1990. It is based on original drawings held by the Ferrari archive. Enzo Ferrari had an obsession with engines and for his very first Ferrari he insisted on a V12, which is unusual for a race car in the 1940s, which normally had a V6 or a V8. He also insisted on a 5-speed gearbox. Again, this is unusual for race cars from the period, which normally had 4-speed boxes. Enzo liked the V12 because of the sound and reverberability of the engine, that's why he insisted on it. He chose Colombo to design the engine and as this engine developed it went on to power some of the greatest Ferraris of all time like the 250 GTO, 250 LM, the original Testarossa and the 275 GTB as well as others. The 125 achieved success for Ferrari winning the 1947 Rome Grand Prix, its first victory only in its second race. By the end of the year it had won 7 and came second 4 times in 14 races that it entered. Not bad for a first car. The 125 was replaced by the 166 in 1948. The next room displays documents and photographs from Ferrari of his history. Unfortunately it did not come out well on camera so I cannot include it in this video. So we're going to move straight to the next part of the exhibition which is part 2 of the exhibition focusing on the form of a Ferrari. Centre stage in this part of the exhibition is a clay model of a J50 designed to celebrate 50 years of Ferrari in Japan in 2016. Only 10 of these cars were produced solely for the Japanese market. The J50 is based on a 488 Spider with the same 3.9 litre V8 twin turbo engine. It is a stunning car even in clay form. Having a full scale model like this one allows a manufacturer like Ferrari to see what a car looks like in real life rather than just relying on drawings and computer aided design which may look good on screen but when seen under the light in person may not look quite right. The clay modeler is able to modify the design whilst working on it until it looks right. Clay models have been used in automotive designs as early as the 1920s. It's interesting to see Ferrari use traditional methods of design as well as the most advanced computer aided designs for their cars. Ferrari used to work with Pininfarina for their designs, an association that lasted 60 years, but in 2011 they decided to part ways. The F12 is the final Pininfarina designed Ferrari, launched in 2012. The J50 is a complete in-house design and it's an indication of what's to come from Ferrari in the future. So we're going to move from Ferrari's present to Ferrari's past. What we're looking at is something well known to those who know their Ferrari history. This is a full-size wooden bug of the 365P, which is a three-seater prototype. Pininfarina used to make full-size wooden bucks to finalize the form of a car. Scaletti, who actually built many Ferraris by hand, used to use these bucks in order to ensure the panels were correct. It was never used to beat the panels against, which is a common misconception, as the wooden bucks were not able to survive such a process. Using bucks like this was used for low-production cars and handmade cars. Ferrari switched to full-dimensional drawings when production increased. Interestingly, Scaletti lost his hearing from all the panel beatings that he used to do but he still insisted on beating panels by hand. Here's an example of a hand-beaten body. It's of a 250LM, which is probably one of the most beautiful Ferraris of all time. It's also Ferrari's first mid-engine car. Only 32 LMs were built. They were crafted from aluminium by Scaglietti himself. Scaglietti also liked to use steel rod models to check if the form of a car is correct, as you can see from this 250 GTO model. It also allows the builder to see if the chassis and mechanical parts fit together correctly. In the 80s and 90s, Ferrari used Apple wood, a synthetic resin compound to create models. As we can see, Ferrari design and automotive design in general have come a long way from wooden bucks and wire models to sophisticated computer-aided design and intricate clay models. Car designs also had to become more sophisticated as they became faster. One of the things manufacturers had to look at was aerodynamic efficiency and stability at high speed, as well as pressure points around the car. Ferrari and Pininfarina did this by using scale models that you see here. The scale models allowed Ferrari to replicate high speed conditions before finalizing their design. It also allows Ferrari to create experimental designs without having to create full size cars. It was nice to see these models at the exhibition. I've only ever seen them in books and magazines. Now we're moving to the third part of the exhibition, 
called the bones of a Ferrari. This looks at the mechanical side of a Ferrari and in particular what Enzo considered the most important part is the engine or as many enthusiasts consider the heart of a Ferrari. The exhibit we're looking at is a 250 long wheelbase chassis and engine. This is an exhibit that you need to spend a long time looking at to really appreciate the workmanship of the, an early handmade Ferrari. I have seen numerous 250s but nothing like this. You would have to go to a specialised workshop to see a chassis and engine laid bare in this way. The chassis we're looking at is a 1957 250 long wheelbase. It is fully restored and running. It is awaiting its bodywork. The engine is 3 litre V12 producing 240 brake horsepower. The 250 series of cars really put Ferrari on the map in motorsport. The 250 cars dominated sports car racing with cars like the 250 GTO, 250 short wheelbase and the TDF. The 250 series of cars are some of the most expensive and desirable Ferraris you can buy today. They are sought after by collectors and enthusiasts alike. So now that we have seen an early engine and its relative simplicity, we're going to move on to a modern V8 twin turbo used on the 488. And just look at how complicated the V8 is compared to the V12 we were just looking at. This is a 3.9 litre unit that produces 661 brake horsepower and can rev up to 8000 rpm. It is Ferrari's first V8 twin turbo since the F40. A variant of this V8 is used in the California T and the GTC4 Lusso T. Besides the modern engine there was this modern chassis of a 458. Older Ferraris like the 250 that we just saw were largely put together by hand. But today modern Ferraris are put together with high tech robots as well as having the human touch. Now we move into part 4 of the exhibition, the client's room, where we can see some of the special cars that Ferrari has created for their owners. The first car is this Testarossa Spider, which is unique. Ferrari only ever built one of these spiders, all other spiders that you may have seen are not factory. This car also has a Valeo system, which means that there is no clutch to change gears. The reason for this is that Gianni Agnelli, who this car was made for, was not able to use a clutch to change gears. I have seen this car before, so take a look at my Ferrari playlist for a close up video. Now we have a 275 GTP finished in an unusual blue. The 275 is regarded as one of the most beautiful Ferraris of all time. This car was delivered to Marinello Concessionaires, a well known Ferrari dealer in the UK, and it was used as a demonstration car, which is pretty cool. Now moving to another Ferrari not finished in red, this is a 166mm finished in an unusual colour combination of green and blue. This is another ex Agnelli car. Agnelli of course ran Fiat and later on Fiat would take control of Ferrari leaving Enzo with just a 10% stake in the company. Only 25 166mm's were built making this an extremely rare car. I don't think any Ferrari exhibition will be complete without Enzo's last car that he signed off, the Ferrari F40. With the F40, Enzo wanted to go back to Ferrari's roots which he succeeded. It is still regarded as one of the greatest road cars of all time, bringing together Ferrari's expertise in road cars and motorsport. Which brings us on to the next room of the exhibition, Ferrari's race cars. We have a selection of cars here covering Ferrari's history. Some of them are extremely famous and have been driven by some extremely famous drivers. This is a front engine Grand Prix car, the Ferrari 500, driven from 1952 to 1953. It is regarded as one of the most successful Grand Prix cars of all time, winning 6 out of the 7 races it entered in 1952 and it won 5 races in 1953. Ferrari won the Constructors and Drivers Championships in both years. Here we have a 250 short wheelbase, driven by Sterling Moss, followed by a very rare 250 Sperimental, which bridges the gap between the 250 GT and 250 GTO with its 300 brake horsepower engine. This car won the 1962 3 hour Daytona race with Sterling Moss again at the wheel. So we're moving from one of the least known Ferraris at the show to probably one of the best known Ferraris in the world, the Ferrari 250 GTO. Finished in this unusual green with a JCB logo on it, only 39 of these cars were built. The 250 GTO won the FIA International GT Championship in 1962, 63 and 64. It remains one of the most important Ferraris of all time and is now famous for being one of the most expensive cars in the world. Moving from Ferrari's successful classic race cars to its more modern period, this is a 2001 F1 car. From 1999 to 2004, Ferrari dominated F1. With Michael Schumacher as a lead driver, Ferrari won 6 Constructors Championships and 5 Drivers Championships in a row. Now this brings us to the final part of the exhibition where we have a La Ferrari Aperta. Ferrari are only making 200 La Ferrari Apertas to celebrate 70 years of Ferrari. The engine is a 6.3 litre V12 producing 950 brake horsepower, 789 of which comes from the engine and 161 comes from the Kerr system. This car represents Ferrari's expertise in producing cars over a 70 year period, from the 125S to the La Ferrari. And this brings us to the end of the exhibition. 
This exhibition is at the Design Museum in London. It runs to the 15th of April 2018. So if you haven't been, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're a Ferrari fan. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Bye.